All right, for the latest on the Trump campaign, let's bring in Aaron Perini, Director of Press Communications for the Trump campaign. Thanks so much for joining us, Aaron. Thank you. So yesterday, the president announced that he's canceling the Jacksonville portion of the Republican convention. What can you tell us about the plans for what the campaign will do in its place? And can we expect to see the president on the campaign trail again after he canceled his last event in New Hampshire? Well, we are going to be having a portion of our convention in Charlotte, North Carolina, the portion that regards the delegates and the necessary work uh, with the Republican National Committee to make sure that both President Trump and Vice President Pence formally become the nominees for the Republican Party for President and Vice President of the United States. I don't want to get ahead or make any announcements today on what other convention planning will look like at this point, but I can guarantee you this is the most innovative campaign with the most record-breaking, record-setting candidate ever. And so what we will bring for the president and for his nomination speech will be epic. <laughs> and so are you unable to say if he will be back on the campaign trail again? Well, I certainly can't get ahead of the president's schedule, but he has been on the trail. He was in Florida just the other week doing a roundtable with uh, Venezuelan uh, dissidents, those who had left the country and fled socialism. Um, so you will see him. We will use different opportunities to be able to get the president out there on the campaign trail, talking directly to the American people about his record and what's to come. Now, your campaign, of course, put out a statement last night saying that the president was, quote, leading by example by canceling the Florida portion of the convention. But the president, as you know, was the one who pushed for an in-person convention in Florida in the first place after North Carolina officials would not agree to it. Meanwhile, the Democrats scaled back their convention plans weeks ago. So how is the president actually the one leading on this? Well, President Trump has been working with the top medical professionals and health professionals to make sure that Americans are safe throughout this process. And he is leading because he is out there making sure that testing is available, that this country is prepared for a pandemic and working through it right now. Let's remember under Joe Biden and Democrats, there was no stockpile available, limited stockpile when it came to uh, handling a pandemic. They left a book which ended up not being able to be used for this pandemic, and he stopped testing for the swine flu. So Democrats really don't have much of an argument to make when they think that they're touting that they're prepared for anything other than failure in November. I mean, that's that's a given. They're never going to be President Trump. And, and you just said he's Joe Biden is never going to be able to beat Donald Trump. Just wanted to stick with that for one second. The polls out there, you're not concerned about that at all? The only poll that matters is the poll on election day. We have seen that these polls are still not getting it right when it comes to talking to President Trump's supporters and what that actually looks like. Even if you just do the most basic breakdown, you look at exit polls from 2016 and 2018, currently you're seeing a sampling size of Republicans in major national polls between 24 and 26 percent. It varies by poll. The exit polls in 16 and 18 both had Republicans at 33%. When it comes to someone like President Trump, who has record enthusiasm for a sitting incumbent, that matters. That makes a big difference in actually making sure you have an accurate depiction of what's going on in this country. We are aggressive across the country. We are in these states, and we know where our voters are and how we're going to get them out in November. This is a data-driven operation since day one. Joe Biden will never be able to catch up to where President Trump is now, let alone in November. You would brought up coronavirus. Let's turn to that. The president this week at Times encouraged Americans to wear masks in public. This comes, of course, of months after health officials gave their guidance back in April to recommend Americans wear masks. Now, once it was clear that the virus could spread asymptomatically, did the president fail to lead Americans on the issue when it could have made a major difference in controlling the spread of this virus? President Trump has done an exceptional job leading America through the coronavirus. If you look back to the end of March, March 31st, the president said, if you want to wear a mask, absolutely do so. And that was before the CDC guidelines came out regarding masks. And it's it's funny because uh, you didn't see members of the press corps wearing masks, even given the early April CDC guidelines, wearing masks in the White House briefing room until the beginning of May. Uh, so, you know, the president's been out there leading on this. He surged testing. He brought forth the largest private-public partnership to make sure that PPE and equipment has been available. Let's not forget that when the press was screaming that there was going to be a shortage of ventilators, we have a surplus of ventilators in this country. That's a direct reflection of President. 
President Trump's leadership on this. All right, and lastly, the president's campaign has repeatedly claimed in ads that Joe Biden wants to defund the police when the former vice president has repeatedly said that he doesn't support that, and he said that he actually supports more funds for community policing. Meanwhile, our latest ABC News Washington Post poll shows Biden leading by nine points on trust to handle crime and safety, and by 25 points on race relations. So would you say that your attacks just aren't working in that particular arena? Well, the facts need to be out there about what Joe Biden has actually said. When asked about redirecting funding from police, he said, yes, absolutely. So really, truly, that's the press playing semantics with a word. Let me put it this way. I'm just going to redirect funding from your paycheck to mine. Does that mean your paycheck gets cut? Does that mean it's lower and there's less dollars in it? It's semantics, redirecting, re, however you want to repurpose the word. A cut is a cut no matter what way Joe Biden tries to cut it. And so we know that this is a conversation. And, and Joe Biden likes to point to the COPS program, how he increased funding for the police, when in actuality, when you really look at it, under the Obama-Biden administration, that was cut by 60%. The police in this country are the bravest men and women who stand up and protect our city streets, and they serve our country every day. Joe Biden has called them the enemy. He is standing there trying to stoke division in this country as President Trump stands proudly with the brave men and women of law enforcement. We will continue to be happy to have that conversation with the American people while the media plays semantics with whether or not Joe Biden actually meant cut. When he clearly did. Well, is it semantics? Because, I mean, at the same time, the fact oh, yeah, is that he's, but he's calling for an additional $300 million in funding for police departments across the country. President Trump has actually already provided money currently. This week he made an announcement of additional funding for police departments that are in the cities regarding Operation Legend. Uh, and let's remember what Operation Legend is about. It's about a four-year-old child who was murdered in cold blood because of a surge in violent crime. They will stand up and be able to support, as the federal government under President Trump and his administration, to go after gangs and violence and drugs in this country. As Joe Biden calls anarchists and violent protesters, he calls those peaceful people. No, they're not. If you're burning, if you're shooting, if you're shooting fireworks at a federal courthouse, that's not peaceful in this country. That's what Joe Biden's talking about. And the media is giving him a large pass when it comes to redirect or whatever he wants to say. Here's the thing. Joe Biden says one thing and then his camp has to come out and clean it up for him because clearly he went off their script. President Trump has been crystal clear this entire time. He has never wavered. He stands firmly with the men and women of law enforcement in this nation. You never have to question that. Aaron Perini with the Trump campaign. Thanks so much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.